this is the first time we're all gonna be doing this in November. So how different is it? How different's the course? How different was your preparation? Well, I mean, the golf course, layout wise, I mean, it's it's what we saw last, or I guess that's last year. It feels like more than a year ago. Um, it's in a different stage of its kind of growth coming out of the summer with there still being Bermuda exposed and the ryegrass coming in. And so you get a variation of, of lies throughout the golf course um, and where it's it can be a lot different from what we see in April is around the greens and some of those different lies that you'll get. But as far as, you know, how it basically plays tee to green, the greens, which they can control um, outside of if we get a lot of rain, uh, hopefully we can stay away from that. The greens, they can control how they want. Um, it'll just be the kind of, uh, I guess, judging the lies properly around the greens and, and how you're going to be able to control or not control the ball. How much different do you think the course is going to play compared to how it normally plays in April? You won't be able to see it on TV, but to us it will feel different because you will get some shots that maybe usually can be not easy, but easier. And, you know, because of the different grasses being there and the lies being a little bit different, might be a little more challenging for us. But overall, for whoever is watching on TV, it will probably be you know, pretty similar. How strange is is the Masters going to be without patrons? It's extremely strange. I think a lot of guys are going to be in the same position where the golf course itself opens up. You can see certain pins on greens which you've never normally seen before because of the patrons that have been sitting, some of the stands. That aren't there now. That are just not there. So you stand in the middle of the 15th fairway, the par five, and there's normally a huge stand to the left with several thousand people, that's gone. So that whole left side's opened up. The stand to the right is gone. You know, there's a big expanse of greenery that's just open. Um, how that's gonna affect the wind around the course, I'm not sure, but it just looks different. The visuals are a little different. Even playing 13, the par five around the corner, normally, you know, to a layup position, you've always got the fans kind of where you're going to want to push the ball sometimes as far right as possible. There's no one there. So it's kind of the stand to the left of 14. It's not there. So now when you stand in there and you're going to lay up, it's kind of you've got to kind of pick your line again. And, and you know, so it's it will play, I think, um, different from that aspect. Obviously, no noise. We're going to be looking at boards, going to try and get a gauge from the boards True. instead of listening to the roar and then look at the board. But even sometimes like, it's not like there's a bunch of boards there. So, cause I feel like a lot of times you, you'd hear the roars and you'd have a good idea of who it was or where it was. And then you'd look for the board for confirmation. You can tell a tiger roar. Yes. You can, you can <laughs> tell what's going yeah. on. You can tell what's going on. And I think there's gonna be something different for leaders this year on the back nine. If things are kind of tight, for, let's say last year, for example, when you have Brooks hitting on the water on 12, and then uh, Tony and Francesco. With all these things going on, and you're a couple holes ahead, you have no clue who it is, and what, and what you know, uh, what's what's happening. Uh, especially when Brooks Eagle 13 afterwards. Um, so being able to hear those moments, you know something good's happening. So it kind of pushes you to make some birdies coming down the stretch, just in case you need to. Right now, you won't hear anything, and two holes later, you might find out, oh, this happened. You know, so it, it can. Not that it'll affect the outcome of the tournament, but I feel like it will affect a bit of what back nine of the Masters on Sunday feels say, like. Yeah, kind of that energy that, that pushes yeah. pushes everyone to have that, you know, last six hole run. You know, it, it could still happen, but right. it's a little different when you're hearing the roars and the people and you get on that run and it's gonna be you and your caddy. If you haven't played the Masters, you don't realize and you don't know how much the golf course changes from Wednesday to Thursday in a regular year. There's some shots you can hit Wednesday afternoon uh, that are absolutely impossible Thursday and even harder as the week goes on. I mean, especially the one I always say is, I hope you guys agree with me on this, <laughs> that the lower area left the 13 green when they leave it a little bit higher and the greens are just enough, soft enough and just slow enough uh, or not as fast. You can hit certain shots to those left pins, to the back left and the short left, and maybe keep it on this right level with a wedge. Fast forward to Thursday, when they've cut everything down, the greens are rolling the way they're supposed to, the suburb has been all all night and it's firm, 
that shot, unless you putt it or you do something miraculous, you can't chip it on the green and stop it. You're looking at easily going down the hill. So it's little things like that that make, make it so special. So prep-wise, there's only so much you can do. Ian said it the best. You just got to get a feel for the golf course in the week. And then once you get to Thursday, see how it is and play. So how do you feel about your game going into this week? I'm confident. I'm always confident. Yeah, you made a hole in one today. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. I'm... Dead aim. <laughs> it's, you know, truly, even though he, I did make a hole in one, whatever you do today doesn't matter. I usually try to get the closest feel you can to, to basically short game. Because hitting the ball is hitting the ball, right? To the green, uh, it, it feels pretty much the same everywhere. You just got to, you know, make a decision and execute. When it comes to short game and the creativity and imagining certain shots at Augusta National uh, really comes into play. So getting the feel for the shots around the green and, and that confidence, I think, is really important. And, and that's usually what I focus on. For me, pace putting on these greens is is critical. You're not always going to be able to hit it to 15 feet. Sometimes 40 feet, 50 feet on a couple of these holes is actually a really good shot into 13, into eight when the pin's at the back and you know you can drive it on that front. Um, you know, just really kind of, you know, how people pace putt around this golf course generally play and score exceptionally well. Well, because probably, I mean, what would you say outside of par fives? Because there's, you, you're, you can reach a lot of par fives in two. How many like legitimate good looks at birdie do you get a day on a, on a good ball striking day. Not enough. Yeah. Not enough. You, so, so you, you, know, you end up with a lot of 25 to 40 footers that you're just trying to get. Yeah. A good putt would be it's, inside three feet. It's hard to get it close on two when you're standing, you know, 250 or 220 or two, 210 into that, in, in, into that. And you can go through the whole golf course. It's hard to get it close on four, even though yep. John's had a little hole yeah, in one. I'm sorry, hard, I'm just ruining your whole it's argument hard right to get it, <laughs> It's hard to get it close on five. Oh, five. It's very easy to miss the back right tier on six and mm -hmm. leave yourself a 50, 60 foot putt up that ridge. Yeah. It's hard to get it real close on seven. So you can go through the whole golf course and understand that you could have a day where you've got nothing but 40 feet. 40 feet. Mm -hmm. So even take care of the par fives. Regulation, you don't have yeah. realistic birdie looks. Exactly. Part, you have to take care of the par fives. The best, yep. best advice I've gotten from two different champions, and I think the viewers will really enjoy, is the fact that statistically, especially the last few years, the only holes that play under par at Augusta National are the par fives. Every other hole is played over par. So that goes to show holes that are shorter, like three. 350 yards, you can hit. I can hit driver <laughs> closer to the green <laughs> <laughs> and have maybe 30, 40 yard shot and that hole still plays over par. So it's, you know, an understanding of how difficult the golf course is and how difficult they can play. So, you know, like Ian's saying, sometimes hitting the 30, 40 feet, it's a good shot. And if your pace putting is not good, you're going to be struggling because those five, six footers with the foot of break are not fun to make. The new S? or the new SUV. Hold on, if I'm driving the S, if I'm being driven, the SUV. So if Ian's driving, I'll take the SUV. <laughs> <laughs> what about, why can't I? I can drive. Well, he's hit, okay, if you drive. But, hey, I'm gonna say you and I would most likely be going to a drive-thru and going to a drive-thru in my bag, that sounds pretty fun to me, so. <laughs> How about both and the Black Series? <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking. Hey, so yeah. Ricky, Ricky can give us a ride. Actually, one of us at a time, but. Yeah. Cause he got I, one coming. I got the Black Series coming. <laughs> I'm kind of excited. You see, you, see how, you see how he says it like that too. Uh, I'm kind of excited. No, both those right there. Hey everybody, thanks again for watching. I hope you guys had as much fun watching this as we had doing it for you. Guys, thank you very much.